Hey everybody, welcome back to our 30 day EKG challenge. Today is day 26, so we're getting close to the end. Congrats to everybody who's still here and uh, I'm excited for today's lecture and for what's to come. So we're on our STEMI lectures and we're gonna transition now to a uh, different region of the myocardium in this EKG with this STEMI. So let's just go ahead and start off with a little bit of what's going on with this rhythm. So we're gonna get an idea here. We're gonna scan through the rhythm. And if I zoom in, I notice that I've got a narrow complex rhythm it seems to be regular, maybe a little bit on the faster side. If I find a QRS that lands on a solid line to measure my rate, we we'll use this one, 300, 150, this is 100, so maybe 130 beats per minute. So 130 beats per minute. So we've got a tachycardic rhythm here, because it's greater than 100, and so I wanna make sure that there are, uh, it's a sinus tachycardia, not some type of supraventricular arrhythmia. I see P waves in front of all of my QRS complexes, and those P waves, if I scan up, they seem to be upright in lead one. There's an upright P wave in lead one, and they're upright in AVF. So that tells me that those P waves are going down and to the left, which means that they're likely coming from my sinus node. So we've got a sinus tachycardia. Okay. The next thing that I need to do is to determine how my AV node is functioning. So I look at my PR intervals, remember that the AV node um, takes that P wave and transmits it to my QRS, to my ventricle. So the PR intervals are surrogate for the AV node's function. And if I find the beginning of a P wave to the beginning of a QRS, I can see that my PR interval is right at the upper limit of normal, which is three to five small boxes or 120 to 200 milliseconds which we have a PR interval here that's about 200 milliseconds. Next thing I'm gonna do is once my AV node captures that signal, delays it like we just measured, it sends it down into the ventricle. So it's our job to then look at what is produced next, the QRS complex. So we first said that the QRS is narrow, right? And it is. QRS here is less than 120 milliseconds. My QRS axis, if I look here, it's maybe isoelectric in lead one, but it's upright in AVF. So a little bit of a, on the rightward side of the axis. So almost a right axis deviation, but not quite. Uh, and you can see that I've got pretty poor R wave progression here. Through my precordial leads, V1 through V6, you can see I don't really have much of a septal R wave. And you can see there's no R wave in V2. There's barely any R wave in V3, V4, V5 and V6, so not a whole lot of activation, especially as we get around that anterior wall of the myocardium, which is a pretty, you know, bulky area of the heart. We should see some R waves there, and I wonder why. And so next thing I do is I look at his ST segments, and what do I notice? I certainly notice this, V3, we've got ST segment elevation, let me do it in a different color, maybe red, red, red seems scary. V4, we've got the most ST segment elevation. V5, ST segment elevation. We've got a little bit in V6. So you can even see that we even have a little bit of extension to leads two and AVF, and to a lesser degree, lead three. So where are we seeing these ST segments elevated? And we're seeing them in V3 through V5 mostly here, and then a little bit in V6. So that tells me that if I look over at my transverse plane, we're getting some ischemic changes in this anterior wall, a little bit to the lateral wall. And then we see it in lead two, greater than AVF, greater than three. So we would say two greater than AVF, greater than three. So inferior, but a little bit inferior but kind of this apical region over here. And then a little bit to a lesser degree this way, right? And so what, <clears throat> what, excuse me, what uh, region of the myocardium is this? This is, a, this is a pretty large anterior ST segment elevation change, right? Predominantly in anterior walls with some extension to the inferior. And we know that in myocardial infarctions, there's two things that happen, right? One, we need to find out the Anatomical region, anatomical region, which is what we just did, right? We said over here, this is kind of anterior 
predominantly, but a little bit of lateral. And then we said to a lesser degree, inferior. Kind of the lateral aspect of the inferior wall. So we did that. And two, we need to determine what vascular anatomy correlates with that region. And in this case, it's the left anterior descending artery, also known as the LAD. Remember that the LAD courses just between the interventricular septums on the anterior wall. So <clears throat> there's a sulcus, there's a sulcus between the left ventricle and the right ventricle on the anterior wall, and this courses through, supplies a, a mar the most of the um, kind of the, that left ventricle anterior lateral wall. So that's why we see when it gets occluded, we see these anterior and lateral changes in our ST segments. And a little bit of inferior in this case, as this um, is a pretty dominant left anterior descending artery that extends a little bit to that inferior wall. And so when I look at this, not only do I see big ST segments are elevated, remember we were saying that there are not really many positive forces in the QRS complex. So this is probably pretty late uh, presenting myocardial infarction in that we're not getting many forces headed to the left side of that myocardium, right? All of this area that is ischemic and infarcted is not receiving signal. None of this area is receiving a lot of signal. So it's pushing those forces in the ventricles rightward, right? And that's why our right, our axis is a little bit on the right side. Uh, so I hope that makes a little bit more sense on, uh, you know, understanding that these pathological Q waves which is what all of these are that we said V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. These are all pathological Q waves telling me, and V1, that there's scarring within the myocardium. And that scarring is likely due to this big ischemic insult that we're seeing. So this one is a different distribution than our previous ones. It's the left anterior descending artery, which is one of the two branches off of the left coronary. Remember that the left coronary artery has the left circumflex, and the left anterior descending. And so in this case, we have an occlusion of the left anterior descending, which courses just in between the left and right ventricles, supplying most of that left ventricular wall um, and some of the interventricular septum as well. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and I hope this EKG helps kind of understand the progression of um, ST segment elevation and then poor conductivity within that region, depending on... Um, how long it's been included for. This has probably been going on for a few hours. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, throw them into the comments. And if not, thanks for watching. We've got four more days left in the challenge. Super exciting. Um, we'll see you on tomorrow's video. Have a good day.